Okay, so the topic of this video will be a main idea core concept comparison of photosynthesis versus cellular respiration. So we'll be talking about this picture as we progress. But let's get started. So here is a picture of, uh, of glucose, the molecule glucose, six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens. And this is really the goal of photosynthesis is to capture sunlight in order to produce and create this molecule called glucose. And so who is performing photosynthesis? Well, it's autotrophs. Now we generally think of plants, but plants are not the only autotrophs. You also have algae and kelp, which is actually a type of algae, and even some bacteria, the cyanobacteria. So there are lots of organisms performing photosynthesis aside from plants. And where does photosynthesis occur? Generally speaking, it occurs in this organelle right here called a chloroplast. I say generally. First of all, if we zoom on in, we can see that there are internal parts of a chloroplast here. But I say generally in a chloroplast because I'm talking about plant cells and algae cells, eukaryotic cells. But there are some prokaryotes, the cyanobacteria, that can do photosynthesis. And bacteria do not possess chloroplasts, but generally speaking, photosynthesis occurs within, a chlor uh, within the chloroplast of cells. And so the core concept of photosynthesis, water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide are going to be used to produce glucose and some oxygen waste. When we look at the chemical formula of photosynthesis or the equation of photosynthesis, the reactants would be six molecules of water, and six molecules of carbon dioxide, and energy in the form of sunlight will yield or will produce the, the products of photosynthesis would be a molecule of glucose, C6H12O6, and six molecules of oxygen. So this is really the core concept right here of what photosynthesis is. And so why is photosynthesis important? Well, Number one, I mean, oxygen is just life-giving to a lot of organisms on Earth. But also, the glucose that is produced as a result of photosynthesis will be transferred to your mitochondria. The mitochondria will use the glucose and the oxygen, for that matter, during the next topic we're going to talk about, cellular respiration, in order to make ATP. So photosynthesis makes glucose. That glucose goes to your mitochondria, and the mitochondria are going to do cellular respiration in order to make ATP, chemical energy, adenosine triphosphate, which we'll talk more about when we go into, photo, uh, into, into cellular respiration right now. So if we shift focus for a moment and talk about cellular respiration, this is a picture of the molecule called adenosine triphosphate. And this is really the goal of cellular respiration, to create this molecule, this energy molecule called AT, uh, abbreviated ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Well, who? Who is able to perform cellular respiration? autotrophs and heterotrophs. So it's not just animals that perform cellular respiration, but also protista and fungus and even plants. So animals perform cellular respiration. Plants perform photosynthesis as well as cellular respiration. So where does cellular respiration occur? It occurs within the mitochondria. Plants have chloroplasts, but they also have mitochondria. Animal cells just have the mitochondria. Animals lack chloroplasts. So animals will perform cellular respiration only. And the core concept of cellular respiration is the glucose and oxygen from photosynthesis are going to be used to create a lot of ATP. And we look at the equation, the reactants uh, or the inputs of cellular respiration. You get a molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen will yield the products. Six molecules of water, six molecules of carbon dioxide, and energy in the form of ATP. Under certain conditions, maybe around 36 to 38 mo uh, molecules of ATP. Now, if we compare these reactions here, if we compare the formulas of photosynthesis 
versus cellular respiration. I hope you realize, I hope you notice, these are what we kind of call mirror images of one another. The reactants of photosynthesis are the products of cellular respiration. The products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. So you can see how, hopefully nicely how these two processes are, are interwoven to be uh, reliant, reliant upon each other. And so why is cellular respiration so important? Well, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, it is the fuel that your cells use. All cells need energy, and that energy comes in the form of ATP. ATP provides the energy for cells to do their work. In order for cells to survive and carry on the processes of life, they need to make ATP. And so what we see here in this animation the chloroplast, through photosynthesis, produces glucose and oxygen. That glucose and oxygen go to the mitochondria. The mitochondria will take the glucose and oxygen and create ATP. That ATP is the energy for cells to do the work that they need to do to survive. Now notice, notice what comes out of the mitochondria. Waste comes out, water waste and carbon dioxide waste, which can be used by the chloroplast to do photosynthesis. So I hope you see how these two processes are connected to one another. Okay, as I wrap this up, if we look at the picture on the top, that's a diagram of a plant cell. And here is a chloroplast, and here is a mitochondria. So imagine sunlight enters the plant cell and is absorbed by the chloroplast photosynthesis occurs, and G for glucose. G for glucose is released. Look where the glucose goes, into the mitochondria. The mitochondria will absorb this and then create ATP. And that ATP, like it says on the right-hand side of the screen, is energy used by the cells. That ATP will provide the power that cells need to do their work. Plant cells have work to perform, and the ATP is the energy they need to do it. Look at the picture on the bottom. It's an animal cell. Well, there's no chloroplast, but there are still mitochondria. Here's a mitochondria. So animal cells need ATP, but they don't make glucose. How do animal cells get glucose? Well, we get glucose from the outside by consuming food. The food that we eat has glucose in it. The glucose is digested and eventually makes its way into our cells where it's absorbed into the mitochondria. The mitochondria of our animal cells can then create ATP. And like the notes say, ATP is the energy used by cells. It provides the power that cells need to do their work. So I hope this nice little connection here between photosynthesis and cellular respiration has been helpful. Thanks for watching.